Welcome back everyone to TNO, the last season of Europe. I'm your host, Soviet Mocha Lover, and right now, we have high moral standards. Vasily whistled as he walked back to camp. It had been a short, victorious battle against some warlord who thought that ruling one village gave him the right to call himself a Tsar. One afternoon's work from Vasily and his comrades and the 34th People's Infantry forcefully dissuaded that would, would be aristocrat from his quest for a crown. Hey Vasily, you only whistle when you found something good. What time is it? Or what is it this time? Drinks are on me when we get back to civilization, Yuri, Vasily said as he reached into his pocket to display his latest trophy, a small gold necklace picked up from a house he was holed up in during the battle. Nice, I should fetch what, 50 rubles at least? Maybe a little more, maybe a little less. All I care about is that this is our ticket to a proper celebration tonight. Halt, what have you got there, comrade? The stern-faced commissar appeared from in front of them, of a pair of seemingly out of seemingly from nowhere. Striding up to Vasily, he snatched a golden vodka ticket from the dismayed soldier's hand. Did I, did you take this to sell or because it brings it out in your eyes? Come with me, Ivanovich. Vasily ended up in a brig that night instead of a bar. The necklace was put into a bag with several other looted bowels to be returned to the village the next morning, for as the commissar chided before ushering Vasily to his cell. That army is meant to deliberate their oppressed from their chains, not their valuables. So much for that vodka. Big sadness for him. But regardless, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should go with the dudes. Sergei Akromeyev, Nikolai Rezekov, or Alexander Yakovlev. Now, at the time of this recording, which there might be votes that are on coming in, but oh well. Um, but overall, the one that has the absolute super majority of like support for us to go in this campaign is Mr. Yakovlev. So we'll go with Alexander for this one. So it is what it is. We can appease his faction. We get more stability that way too, huh? Actually, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but since we've chosen him, and we really need to focus on reducing our administrative bloat and strain, well, we're probably not going to go down this way. As much as I'd love to begin improving our army some more, it is what it is, but restore the VKP... B. Membership. It is the Bolshevik All-Union Communist Party which took power in the October Revolution of 1917 and which formed the Soviet Union. Any attempt to reconstitute, reconstituate uh, the Soviet Union must be, by necessity, incorporate the party of Lenin Bukharin. That is why we must take the first steps outside refounding the party by bringing its old members into our administration in a limited capacity. The front is still a military regime under Grand Marshal Zhukov, but we must look to a future beyond Soviet reunification. Someone did say that they would have kind of, even though we came from Kamchatka earlier, they would have preferred us seeing the power struggle between us and Tukhachevsky, which would have been cool, don't get me wrong, that would have been really cool. But, it is what it is. Maybe I'll come back on a much later day if the if these guys get like a reform or you know reform get an update maybe i'll come back and play zukov again we'll see so emphasize a party status versus emphasize people's role i think we got to go with the people's roles to get more political power and get registered voting in this age of warlordism and fascist insanity we must remember the gains of october universal suffrage abolition of the classes and power to the worker it was always the intention of lenin that the party should be the voice and sword of the people and that the party rule and lead on their behalf while the military necess necessities of the front make any ideas of democracy difficult, we would be good to remember that what it is exactly that we've been fighting for all these long years, the Soviet people, back in town. On this day of return to his office, Moshin made sure to address his finest. Memories of sneering mockery echoed throughout his head as a restored administrator walked into the building, flashing his entrance card like it was studded with fa Farberge eggs. As military officers shuffled by, hiding their rank and names, he could barely resist a slight smile on his face from the blossoming into a full-fledged grin. He whispered, yes. Party member Motion was coming back in style. There was a table right next to his office, and it lay on several party emblems and a dossiers attached. Motion grabbed at one random one. The office goodies were always the best on the first week, and he began to flick through the fresh pages of the dossier like he owed the place. He already owned the place. He always fantasized about getting a nice, cushy desk job, but the jack booties, who thought they ran West Russia with their guns and their stupid army kept getting in the way. Now, how? However, this was his town, and he'd gotten a nice promotion in the bargain, too. The office was his domain, primed and unmolested, and the officers who once bullied him were all well out of the way. He hoped that they'd have their fingers rot off in the snow. Motion plopped down on himself in the office, and gorged himself on the biscuit stash he found on the way in, and was half supine when the security staff came to escort him out. Protesting motion snapped that he was a bureaucrat now, gosh darn it. Gregory Zukov had kicked the army out, and the men like him in. Who were they to defy authority? Rolling their eyes, the staff asked to return on Monday. The offices were closed on Sunday, apparently. Murmuring, they retreated, leaving a humiliated motion to walk all the way back to his home. At least, he got to keep the free pen. And then, uplift socialist uh, values. Not bad. Better army professionals will be elected by that. Please go right ahead. Cool. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Political interference. That's a little better. Uh, political power. Let's go with rebuild the bureaucracy. Maybe, 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 maybe. Oh, let's get more political power. A new normal. Um, hmm. Political power, 
acceptable pensions, better poverty rate, which I like, 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 liberalized appointment criteria. Yeah, I'll go to reveal the bureaucracy. The recent expansion of the West Russian Revolutionary Front has put a severe strain on the state of bureaucracy with hundreds of administrators being sent out to govern our new territories. At our capital in our Congos, the central government is experiencing a severe manpower shortage. The situation has reached a level where our efforts to cement our control over Western Russia have been seriously hampered as a result. We need to rebuild the state bureaucracy from the ground up. Uh, someone does, there's actually quite a few people who recommend in this campaign that we, since we want, we're going with Yakovlev, that we should ally with the OFN, or you know, Increase relations with them. So we will. And uh, let's see. Someone said that when we take out Kazakhstan, we should take out the Kurds. Um, the Kurds are over here. So that's going to be a little bit hard for us to get to. So I'm not sure about that. But we'll take out as many Kazakhs as we possibly can. Just because we can. Look at that. Eliminate tariffs with the OFN. Oh, that's not bad. We've not passed a reform in the past 65 days. Getting greater access to trade opportunities. Um, That's not bad. Af abolish the forced labor system. Okay. That's kind of cool. How do we do that one? I guess we're going to try to appease him first, maybe. All right, so he's at 35.5. Does it give us any benefits? Because sometimes when you do it like that... Oh, there you are. You can eliminate tariffs now. That's not bad. I'd like to exert southern influence, but that's okay. And we're probably going to have to liberalize appointment criteria. There are a great many men in our newly conquered territories who are former bureaucrats once embedded in the various warlord states, despite being associated with quite unsavory regimes. Such men could be of great value to our cause by helping us refill our depleted state bureaucracy. All of them will obviously have to be screened and some excluded from possible employment, but the bulk will be of use. Under our guidance, they will learn to serve a new master, the Soviet people. Very good. And de-escalate, or escalate de-warlordization trials. That seems like a lot of fun, but if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Nice. Spend, cut. That's totally fine for now. And then, <clears throat> legislate minority autonomy. One of the immense strengths of the old Soviet system was its emphasis on federalism and self -nation uh, national self-determination. It is time to show the ethnic and national minorities in our territory that we are not great Russian chauvinists who seek to rob them of the rights and liberties. We will establish the Bashkir and Tatar autonomous Soviet socialist republics, winning the loyalties of the Bashkir and Tatar peoples, and making it clear to all ethnic and min national minorities that we are on their side. Cool. Hmm, I'm just taking a look before we do the research. I want to lower the ag the administrative strain as much as possible. Ooh, we get more political power more quickly. I might go with that one, actually. Instead of what the Bashkir and Tatar one. Get that one, that'd be good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. A new edge of culture. Culture is not a field that the West Russian Revolutionary Front that has had the luxury of being able to consider, but now that we have secured control over Western Russia is an issue that we will be forced to address as people have more and more time to spend on leisure activities. Yet, the government is faced with more questions than answers. What should we? What should be the approach of freedom of the press? Should art be free from censorship or reflect the needs of the Soviet state? Is the experimental art a waste of time? Old enemies, new friends, and we have some things we can do here. I would love to do that right now, but I think we got to do some agricultural stuff. Academic base. Oh, get that industry bonus. I gotta go for that one first, though. Because mm. right now... Or, wait. We're on mass mechanization. It's still going up still. That's not bad. Not bad. But old enemies, new friends. The new arrival was shown to his desk by an assistant who smiled and asked if he needed anything else before leaving him at his new post. He was pleasantly surprised that his new office space was bigger than the one he had worked in before, and that one he was an archivist in the Tsarist administration in Biatka. He had somehow always expected that the front was stingy with that kind of thing and that he would be somehow working in a barn with ten other men. It was taken by surprise that he had gotten job, the job at all. <clears throat> when the Red Army had taken the city, he had been assured that he and the other bureaucrats would not be that he would be executed along with the higher up Tsar's officials, but it was not to be. Instead, they had offered him a job letting him work as an archivist for the Red Army Central Statistical Directorate. They either desperately needed some competent bureaucrats or the front really did rule with a very light hand. Either way, he was happy to serve. Uh, or really have work. Better than being at the bottom of a ditch like the Tsar and his generals. They all have a new place in our Russia. 65, 65. Good, good, good. We're doing that too. It is 67. Oh my goodness. No wonder we weren't doing well. Um, The AI did not focus on the land auction at all. And I guess I haven't either technically, but wow. That is incredibly bad. Uh, just in case, I'm going to go actually for main battle tanks because we want we are making some tanks. So. And I'll come back to do the research stuff in a little bit. Encourage cultural experimentation. Uh, Chris is Yaglov. If you like to read about enforced proletarian standards, which sounds like a lot more fun to me personally, cool, but that encourage this. The earliest Soviet Union was the site of an explosion of artistic creativity born from the liberality 
spirit of October. It stands for us to revive that spirit and usher in a new period of cultural experimentalism. The works of Vertov, Tatlin, and Kandinsky must be remembered and cherished. Creativity in literature, art, music, film, and more should be pursued with vigor. Freedom of art and press should be reestablished, even dissenting press under a state supervision and censorship. Such measures will fill the people with the knowledge that our Soviet state is a pioneer not just in politics but in all other matters as well. Very nice. And what do we have here? Tanks, yes. Yeah, see, I told you we need some tanks, eh? Tanks, yes. Ivan, what do you have for us? Anything? No? Okay. Oh, look at all this stuff. Nice. Iron Four Instructors, though. God, I wish we had more PP. Oh, we barely have any point for it, too. Oh, my goodness. But sponsored to cultural development. All the great institutions of the Soviet Union, or Soviet culture, and arts were lost along with Moscow and Leningrad during the Great Patriotic War. If we are to revitalize socialist culture inside the borders of the front, we'll have to reconstitute such institutions and restore them to their former glory. New theaters are ac academies, film studios, and universities will need to be built, and considerable resources put aside to encourage artistic and cultural projects. Only through such efforts can we kickstart our cultural development. And also another comment was, I should play more End of the New Beginning mod. I'll get to it eventually. I will. There's just so many things been going on in my life, and videos to make that I can't quite get to it yet but that's okay back on the air oh look at that after we do one of these ah uh, poverty Greetings, comrades, and welcome back to Radio Free Sective Car. After a long hiatus, indeed, we are back on the air and ready to bring you the quality reporting that you've come to expect from the station. My name is Maxime, and I'm joined by my good partner, comrade An Anatoly. Indeed, it's good to be here with you, comrade Maxim. Now, for those of you at home, you may be wondering what happened to the old host. Unfortunately, this station can only continue to exist thanks to the wonderful sponsorship of the Communist Party, and thus were, there were some disagreements with just how the station should be run. Rest assured, however, that we remain just as committed to bringing you all the latest news from around Russia. Yes, yes, a warm round of thanks to the Communist Communist Party for their patronage, it is con contributions like that which enable independent media like this to thrive. Oh boy. Now that we settled that, <clears throat> let's move towards the topic of today. First, we shall discuss the most common ways that the reactionaries try to manipulate people and how to spot it for yourself. Then, we've got to tell all interview with Comrade Zukov himself so that you won't want to miss. All this and more after the break, so stay tuned. Something seems a little off with this station, but you know, maybe it's just us. And as much as I want to use this one, I really want to use this one sometime. Uh, we got to go to Trishan Planning. Face bleed, more artillery, sign us up, Iberia is collapsing, and then uplift socialist values. Prior to the arrival of the Red Army, many of the territories that were now in control of the hands of the Tsarists, Nazi collaborators, and other reactionaries, they have sadly spread their poisonous backward ideas amongst portions of the civilian population. We will have to put considerable resources into agitational propaganda to sway the people in these regions over to our cause, and instill in them an understanding of loyalty to the socialist values. We are confident that with time, the people will remember the lessons of October. The Heirs of Babylon, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. It happens every campaign, so it's just an American book. But happy 1968, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. Oh, boy. Um... Well, if you want to read about Race for the Rose, you please go right ahead. Omsk never does it, and they'll literally just go to war with them, so... Gotta love it. Increase investment? Yes. Yes. Because we want to get them in our sphere. Excuse me. In, in our sphere. Hi, hi, hi. And we couldn't do this early because we're not doing their political stuff yet, but that's okay. I want to get... Maybe... You know what? We'll get this one done next. We want to join the OFN or whatever. So... And I'm not going to launch military intervention into them. Exert influence. Yeah. And then, stress Soviet egalitarianism. It sounds like fun. Versus the new Soviet woman. Well, that sounds like fun and all, but... We'll probably have to go with stress Soviet egalitarianism. Many claim that the front has a long way to go on women's rights, but such people forget the inherently feminist nature of our social system and the great gains that October won for the Soviet women. The Soviet Union was one of the first countries in the world to grant women equal status to men in all legal matters, divorce upon request, and full rights to vote and participate in politics. Women continue to be equal in Soviet society today. We should not forget this as we fight to liberate women across the Russian warlord states. Cool. And keep spending. Because it gives us more political power too, which I we just need. And we're doing okay on building stuff up. I mean, joining or becoming the WRF after we play Kamchatka, and we couldn't set ourselves up for like really good, uh, you know, a campaign earlier on. It's kind of hurting us, but it is what it is. There's nothing we can do. This is not the way I would have played Zukov earlier, but whatever. And I really would like to get through this uh, political turmoil that we have right now before we go to war with the Omsk folk. Across the Urals. 
Anything else here? Can I do discredit? No, we just want to get as high as possible. High, high, high. Get them into our sphere. Increase the relations. So we need even more influence, which is going up every day. And then increase the relations. They were high. They're high. And ap appeal to the populace. We get more monthly poverty, poverty change, we get more cost, but more stability. We need to show the civilians in our newly occupied territories that we are different from the callous warlords and fascist fanatics who once ruled over them. The front fights for the Soviet people and cares deeply for the security and welfare. For this reason, we must introduce increased pensions, ensuring that the old and infirm are not only protected physically from foreign threats by the Red Army, but also protected socially from the deprivations that they have previously faced. Such measures will go a long way to appealing to the populace of Western Russia. Good, and this is... My goodness, I don't know how the AI did not do this. No wonder we can usually beat them. They chose not to get 20% more defense and 20 more organization for infantry. I mean, that's almost suicidal, man. Hi, hi. Yeah, they're not investing at all. Good, good, good. And actually, how strong is Omsk? Because I think I made our guys 40 combat with, I think. They don't have that much population, but they have up to... Oh, that's a lot of divisions. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And we need way more infantry equipment, so maybe we want to make sure we have enough of that already. Wow, we need a lot. Go down to two, go down to two. Because we need way more guns right now. A rallying cry for the Solstice Brother. We've marched across the breadth of Russia from Arkhangelsk to Yaroslavl. We've broken the back of every army that dared to challenge us. The revolution is our heartbeat, and with its every pulse we grow stronger. We shall stop at nothing to realize a socialist paradise. But this is alone but this alone is insufficient. Well, for the banners of the Red October fly above our home and in the working place and the family home at it is as if the Tsar never left. Yes, Karmas, just as we were unrelenting towards the fascism that poisoned Russia's soil, so too we must be unrelentingly vigilant towards the hometown fascism of gender inequality. Consider, comrades, a list of restrictions that we've removed in the liberated areas under control. The socialist woman now holds the right to a public office, the right to vote in revolutionary elections, the right to compulsory primary education, the right to equal workplace representation, to join union activities, and to domestic litigation. Comrades, it is clear that the liberation of the Soviet woman is at hand. The capitalist marauder limps to his cave, but he's not quite done, depressing the women he fears. Let us prepare to mount resistance to his evil acts wherever we can, to sign the general revolutionary working group. Cool. Eliminate tariffs. And then after that one, then we'll come down here and do some more of this stuff, because this is much more important to do, honestly, in my opinion, but whatever. Uh, let's see. Experience additional space. Poverty is going up by... Well, poverty's getting better for our nation. Yeah, other than that, not too much. Political interference. I mean, we did get that already, so... But we're getting close to a professional army, which is nice. Because we're definitely going to need against uh, Omsk here. And these guys are all, should be all 40 combat with. Yep. So, we don't have a lot of divisions, but they should be relatively decent. Increase the relations. Good. Oh, crap. Now they already got a war. Well, crud. So... I've already read this before on this channel, so if you'd like to read about the invasions of Southern Urals, please go right ahead. But what we're going to do is probably say, hey, guys, you want to join us? Oh, we got even better artillery before the war starts. Nice. If we can break over the Urals first, that'd be really, really good. And we already have plenty for these guys, too. That's nice. And I did put planes on our infantry, so must be punished, strike them directly. We we'll smash them, invade them as well. Can I force stay back? No. we got to go this one. Uh, let's get the tanks up there first. Three, two. I'm going to have all the Omsk soldiers come down first. So that we can do this. Oh, my bad. We have this too. And... Party. One. Go, go, go. And we should have our planes over here very, very soon. Let's see, we got planes already. Nice. Doing a little bit of damage. Not a lot, but hey, it is what it is. Oh, Omsk. Why do you have to be Omsk-like? Oh, since we're here. Uh, and we're going to do this one next anyway, so. And it's going to happen in about a day or two. Not bad. Not bad. This copy that I do have is pretty good too. Minority autonomy. Help out, help out. We've lost about 3,000, they lost about 8,000. Not enough. Um, are you guys going anywhere? Would you, would you like to come to Borkuta? It's a nice time, a nice place to be this time of year. Not really, it's April. Then again, is it ever nice to go to Borkuta? I don't know. If you'd like to read about the gulags uh, captured, please go right ahead. Sometimes great men must do awful things. Uh, you actually get more recruitable population factor. Never again, not like this. Um, I kind of still like the gulags. I'll be honest, I kind of still like them, but we have enough manpower. Never again, not like this. So they have up to 27 divisions. They're losing more manpower, which is good, but we got to be careful. We don't have a lot of guns. Then again, we're still attacking, so. 
Um, anything else over here? Not really. So now let's go and plant, and we're going to use these tanks to the best that we best possible way we can, and hopefully by encircling enemies, which I actually might send you guys up north. So this way we can encircle guys up north first, perhaps. So being at war is not a bad thing sometimes, but we're going to go to something like that. So just prepare ourselves. That's the most important thing. Eh, anything here? There's so many things we do. Nope. Mm, we can close it one for now, then. Nope, not too much. Cool. So they're struggling down here, which is... Oh, hello. Hello, look at that. Let our guys get some more planning done. And then we will strike probably here. Oh, look at that. Nice. Good job, guys. And now, we can either... Lessons from the Old Union, which if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. But we want to do... You uplift the young bureaucrats. As Red Army swept through the rebellious warlords of West Russia, many new and promising bureaucrats joined our government. It has been suggested that for the invaluable service of the revolution in those turbulent times, many of these so-called young bureaucrats are deserving of a promotion. Despite warnings from some within the current bureaucracy that these newcomers may be ideological deviants without an utmost devotion to the revolution, we have decided to authorize these promotions. Cool. I'm going to save my PP and do escalate land reforms because I want to be able to core this stuff much, much more quickly. All right, so are they attacking us at all? What's going on? Oh, that sucks. That really sucks for them. Uh, go here. Oh, that really sucks. Can I give them military access? Oh, that's really bad if we can't. Oh, boy. Come on, tanks. You're taking way too long to get up there. I don't know why you're taking so ungodly long. Uh, you guys actually might be able to win there already, so we'll see what happens, see what happens, see what happens. Good, good, good. I want to cut them off at the top first. That's the goal. Uh, no, just go there. It'll be fine. Spread loss would be nice to get, but whatever. Black market available. Nice. You find them, you beat them up. How'd you guys come over here or something? I don't know. All right, tanks, you up there yet? Oh my gosh, come on, man. Tanks, not even once. But now we're going to increase... Oh, military spending, which would be good, too. So, Well, I guess it's time to get Sverdlovsk. They've lost 72,000. Nice. So if we keep attacking, they probably won't have any... Oh, no, they still have a little bit of manpower. Just a tiny smidgen. There you go. Spend, spend now. Uh, go ahead and go in this way. That's fine. Do that. Do that. Uh, you should do relatively okay against these guys. Good. I should be able to move there pretty quickly, too. And brood main battle tanks. Very nice. But we'll upgrade them when we're down here. Let's get some more uh, soft attack first. And cement the transition. Or pillarize the system. Which we'll do this one. Ooh, we go from one party state to controlled opposition. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We lose political power. I don't like that. But the front is, to put it bluntly, terribly inefficient. The ideals of socialism are, of course, worth upholding, but pursuing them dogmatically while the Union crumbles around us would be a foolish endeavor. A new constitution to be implemented upon the front's dissolution shall be drafted. This constitution shall guarantee democracy, a more stable and gradual path towards communism, and although opposed by some of the older bureaucrats, a limited amount of privati privatization. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do this one. For Corin times. Alright, so we're moving in. Let's get these guys in there. Ah, see, we united them. Good, 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 good. R, 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 R. And we're still slowly going to push this way, too, so. Not bad. Oh, they are attacking us there. Oh, boy. I wonder how much of the land auction they've gotten done, though. Hmm. Questions I always ask. Actually, how about this? Can we add a sphere? Yes. And they're aligned. Ah, oh, and they attack us, eh? Ah, oh, good. So now we got to go over here, too. Hopefully we have some infantry moving around here so we can get this stuff done. Good. So we've lost 15,000 versus 108,000. My goodness. Oh, those guys died. That's not good. Hey, the plant. If you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Good. Oh, they're our ally, too. Oh, that's good. Um, You guys can just milk that one up. Oh, never mind. Just go in there, then. Better artillery. Thank you. Even better artillery after that one, too. Nice. If we need to stretch this down just a little bit more, that's fine. Alright, so we have that division here. Let's move into here and maybe over there, maybe next. Because I want to cut off everyone in the top first and then 
Move back down. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Very nice. Priobie. I don't know why that keeps popping up, though. Uh, new. No, you are going to have to help hold and push actually over the river. Actually, you're just going to go right on ahead. Help him out. Nice. Come on. Oh, that allows the system. So we're done with the political stuff. Great, great, great. So now we can do some more stuff here. Um, this was nice. If you like to read this one, please go right ahead. Uh, agricultural GDP growth. Generation of visionaries. Yeah, we gotta go with this one. We believe in the power of the masses, not the will of the single men and women, to drive history onwards. Nevertheless, we would be foolish to deny that certain intelligent men and women are more capable of advancing the revolution than others, and these people, these visionaries, deserve to be recognized, honed, and pointed straight at the front's enemies as their biggest intangible weapon. Of course, finding these talents will never be easy. We will have to overhaul our research talent recruitment system, and our standardized testing entirely in the ideological aspects gives our recruitment development headaches, but for the rebuilding of the socialist motherland, all sacrifices are worth our while. Ah, the new Soviet Constitution. Zhukov read the new Constitution. Be careful to make sure all was in order. Once it was signed, it can, never, it can never be undone. The front would be changed forever. Of course, the Constitution would not go into effect until the front was disbanded, and that wouldn't happen until Russia was united and Leningrad and Moscow were back in the Soviet Republic. Still, the Constitution being signed off now would mean stability later, liberalizing the Union. It should make everyone happy. Limited privatization had been, the, had been argued into the Constitution. Zhukov had no idea how that got past the old guard. Many were looking forward to seeing a democratic system in Russia, albeit limited, as it would only serve as controlled opposition. Zhukov raised his pen and signed, hopefully, hoping it wouldn't be for nothing. Can we even hope to see this constitution in effect? Maybe. Nice. And we've got to keep doing that stuff too. Come on, get over the river. Up a little bit of lag. And... Oh, oh. How did you get there first before these guys? Well, whatever. And there's not that a lot of divisions up there, but if you like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Excellent. Excellente. So, actually, the Far East Imperial Realm. Okay. And they still gotta kill each other over there, which is fine. We beat them up. Ah, oh, that sucks. We're gonna really stretch out our infantry. Um, yeah, no, you gotta go this way, guys. You gotta go that way. I can short that just a little bit more, probably. I can make that a little shorter, which is nice. <clears throat> um, I told you to go here, guys. Or you can go right here. That's fine. No. Oh, never mind. No. What are you do? guys doing? No, 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 no. So are these guys actually out of manpower now? Or... Yeah, they are. Huh. Well, let's keep beating them up then. All right, let's, I don't like this point here. There you go. Help them out. You gotta beat them up. Let these guys move, and then we'll beat them up some more. And those guys are moving as well. That's fine. Whatever. Um... Actually, if we could take that division, that'd be probably pretty good. Can you guys help out and win? Yes? No? Okay, you you guys suck. Oh, man. Not having a good land auction. It just, it's so not good. It's so not good. Uh, move into Generation of Visionaries. And increase agricultural subsidies. Yeah, I'll do this one. One attempt would merely seize a grain from the farmer when it is not enough, but who would that serve? Neither the city, the worker, nor the peasant shall suffer the misery of hungry in our union. We should give the farmers the funding they need, and only ask for one thing in return. More food. Do whatever you have to, but but give us more bushels. Yes. Very good. Uh, is anywhere else we get? Oh, yes. We can attack right here, maybe. We're going to attack here first. You probably should be able to win pretty easily, actually. Very good. We might be able to attack here, too. Um, are these guys still moving around? I'm waiting for these guys to get out so we can move into here. That bearing war is very jaunt. Ah, oh, good. Finally, more, 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 more. Alright, there you go. And, boom, go right there. And pretty much literally just cut them off. Oh, come on, man. Where'd you come from? Yeah, you're fake news. You're fake news. There you go. And we're gonna win, hopefully. Cut them off. Hopefully, come on, come on. I want to get rid of these guys, but these guys aren't that strong. Hmm. All right, I guess we move it. Okay, I guess the road to Omsk is open. And have we gotten there? Come on, guys. Come on, move, move, move. I know it's swampy there. It's literally the marsh. Are you kidding me? How did you get in there before us? No, 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 no. We should be there now. Why did you stop? What the heck? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess we're moving in. 
Q man? Hello. Oh, it's time to attack. Screw it. Actually, go there, too. That'd actually be really good. Well, we're taking off. Um, where's the capital now? Is it Fort Kuta? No, it's up here, huh? Oh, okay, then. Uh, let's go here first, so we can get some support from everyone else, maybe? That'd be quite good. Good. Now we got some of this, too. And we shall do agriculture. Uh, actually, this one. We get industrial equipment and we get more infrastructure, so that's actually really, really, really good. How close are they to capitulating? They're not that close. Well, they're pretty close, but still not close enough. Nice. Keep these guys in place. Do not let them move. No, no, no. And, end of war communism. If you like to read about a measure tra tradition, please go right ahead, but... And war communism. War communism was a tragic joke. It was a joke without a punchline because its real butt was the collective welfare of the Russian people. We must now emphatically, emphatically, turn away from this mess of a policy embracing the will of the free market to drive some of our production demand. The workers' welfare must be enshrined with it the tenets of Bukharanism. We will not pretend that this is not in part a political move designed to boost our legitimacy, nor will we pretend that our leadership will take the credit. But this is socialism after all. And if it works, nobody will think to complain in the history books. Oh wow, we lose so much. Oh, oh my goodness. There's so much political power. Wow. That's really bad. Come on, move in, move in, move in, move in. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, there's another one too? What the heck? Hey, let's grab them a little bit. That's nice. Go ahead, everyone. Go ahead. Man, these tanks really suck right now. Uh, get some more armor. Good look at that. That's so good. Um, Can we get in there too? Are you guys not there yet? What the heck? Oh, there you go. That's nice. <clears throat> Actually, I would advise, I'd advise this one much more than that one, so. Take the capital, that should be it then. Hey, look, some Omsk divisions. Black market available, how about up here? There you go. And, are they dead? No. Coup d'etat brings an end to the Indonesian Civil War. Whoa, look at that. Nice. General, smiling general watches. Hey, another infantry division. Good, good, good. We took the two capitals, and they're done! Um, I already read this once on, so I'll never get like, I like this. Cool, so that was great! Except that I actually, we actually might be able to go to war with these guys first. Which wouldn't be bad, but man, those tank divisions, oh man, we need to make them better. I think I made these guys pretty combo with already, but whatever. That's fine, that's fine. Another infantry division, that's good. Let's keep throwing them on there. Cool! Not bad, my friends, not bad! I knew we'd be able to take out Omsk, and then... It's almost always, you're almost always able to, but... Oh, crap, we need more political power. Oh, crud, do that. Integrate them, and integrate them. Oh, and maybe we should have not done that, because that's going to cost quite a bit, so... That's uh, a little bit ahead of time. Let's come back over here and do some gun stuff. Guns are nice. Cool, and we're slowly building ourselves up more, 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 more. And if war communism, cool. And develop rural infrastructure. Our ruralities suffered grievous harm in the interwar years as the ravages of the war broke at the back of the countryside. We'll take measures to overcome this error by integrating them into the glorious new system we've designed, one that runs goods from the heart of the city to the ends of our domain in days, if not hours. With this integration will come political control, of course. And there'll be opportunities to enforce previous lax adherences to socialist principles. But freedom is not truly free unless it is socialist after all in time. The rural world will come to understand this. And actually before, actually, you know what? Go and select that. Spend. Cut now. Man, we have no political power. That's so bad. A small shock with the policy of war communism lifted. An economic shock has been felt across Russia, or West Russia. The transition of a mobilized war economy to a civilian one has been noticeably impacting our economy. We may want to be more careful with our economic policy in the coming days, as anything could cause our economy to still crash. Still, the economic shocks currently felt has been small, but our economy remains unstable. Many are happy with the new change, however. The quick change means improvements for our civilians producing goods that could have not come any faster any other way, and civilians can now keep more of what they produce. If our economy can stay stable within the next few days, it's expected that this will only show up as a small bump on our economy. A radical change, certainly. Consumer goods. Product oh my gosh. Oh, that sucks. That sucks so much. Well, expand the oil industry. An army marches on its stomach, but it can march further and through much more if it has oil. Oil is the lifeblood of our army, and what will 
grant us victory. Our mechanized military demands it for tanks, trucks, and aircraft. Our economy needs it for tanks and trains to bring supplies and materials to where they need to go and to power the factories of Russia. We must provide it with as much as we can get. Cool. If you like to read about their Euro League accepts, as well as Orenburg, please go right ahead. It is what it is. Whoa! We actually get... Look at that. We gain the wealth of Orenburg, we consumer goods, construction speed factory output, and way more political power, which we can desperately use right now, as well as the Euro League. They know what's best for them, which we get more army XP, not political power, but I'll still accept it. They get more army experience gain, special forces attack, defense, more higher training, minimum training level, but more capacity multiplier, which we're not even using, but that's okay. And with integrating them, we get all their divisions, which I'm not even going to bother looking at. So, there you go. Oh, wait, uh, actually, you go here then. Nice. That's going to really increase our cost, but that's okay. So, we basically have the military that we really need right now. Um, that, if that's the case, we could probably cut this down by two, perhaps. We have way more cost now, though. Uh, let's go ahead and integrate more. That's probably the most important thing to do. Uh, let's do Orenburg first. Is there anything else we had to do here? I, mean, I want to do this stuff badly, but whatever. So, the Taos, maybe. I don't know. Fukuta doesn't have that much. Magnorosk and Svedlosk. More industry, please, 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 please. And you need a field marshal there, son. You need a field marshal. Zukov, ah, yes, please. And after the oil industry, begin the redistribution. We've not inherited an egalitarian paradise. We've instead conquered a land that has been abandoned its pretenses of equal wealth and disdain for private property. We will see again a system of unequals where a few have hoarded wealth that while the great masses struggle. We fix that now. Property redistribution will begin again, and this time everyone will really end up with what they truly deserve. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, we could do Russian unifi reunification, but that would ruin our fo focus recurrently, and we don't want that. Actually, how are these guys doing? Uh, is it Shostakovich? No. Like a... Like a Chikov. Okay, cool. They have a little bit of manpower. They Both sides don't have a lot of manpower. Uh, this guy is probably has slightly more divisions, maybe? And neither side has a tank. So, good to know. Good to know. We can only get 0.61, which is better than before. So, for the re beginning of the redistribution... Property rate will begin to rapidly improve. Eight hour work days. We lose output, get more stability. Things are looking up. All right, not bad. Not bad. We have plenty of arm XP too. We need to get Marines. I forgot about that. We need to get Marines too. Nice. And integrate two men. Even though Omsk would be pretty good. Actually, what's has more population? Omsk or two men? Omsk has 1.35 million. Two men has. Oh, Omsk is definitely first. Top... Oh, should have Omsk first. Whatever. Nice. And actually, how about better planes? Get some jet engines, maybe? But I said marines, because I want to be able to make our marine division even better. So, 1936 marines. Wow, we are really behind the times. Wow! Uh, oh, that goes Germany. Return to Bukharin. Oh, boy. Or, recenter the policy. So, if you like to read about this one, please go right ahead. Expand the production bureau, which is not bad. I like the civilian stuff. And Soviet-oriented development looks pretty good, too. But we have to return to Bukharin. Our hatred of Bukharin's military policies is well documented. One may never forget that. But his economic policies? These are hard to criticize from our perspective. One might even call them admirable. And we will continue with them. The Union will continue along this path, adopting the plans he sets out, set out to fulfill, and fulfilling the wonders that he had envisioned. Very good. Oh, we're kind of a lot of manpower. But then again, once we get a core more stuff, we'll have more than enough manpower and know what to do with stuff. So, Actually, what are we... Oh, we have plenty of guns. Look at that. We actually have plenty of guns. We need more tanks, so the amount of infantry equipment is not bad. Things are looking up, though. Did you know that? Things are actually looking up. Let's do that, and then do that. Do that. Go back to 20. There you go. Uh, support equipment. There you go. There you go. Go with two. Uh, that's okay for now. So, people have begun to notice things are looking up for West Russia. Economically, we're better off than we've ever been before, and poverty has been at its lowest since uh, Russia was last united. No longer do people have to fear if they're going to survive each day. Now, more food is being produced, and new factories are creating more jobs than ever. New industries are also producing more goods for people to buy, increasing the quality of life all around West Russia. And a Hungarian lifestyle is slowly becoming an industrial one, and our economy is seeing the benefits. It's good that the people are happy, and more are seeing the advantages of communism. It's apparent Zukov has more popularity than ever. The Marshal's government seems to be stable and the stability is bound to continue. Yet there's still much work to be done to improve the economy and prepare for, for reunification. There are many options still ahead of us. It is time for us to choose the best one and continue the growth. Good to hear. And Omsk is next because that's so much population that needs to be uh, settled. So uh, that's meant. So if you want to read about the, uh, develop the Industrial Corps, please go right ahead. As well as the Western Sib Plan, which looks pretty good. Not bad, but uh, it is what it is. 
but will go the policy of foreign involvement or investment. Before the Great Patriotic War, the Soviet, the Soviet government was hostile to foreign investments, believing it was a foot in the door for foreign capitalist powers hostile to the socialist aims of our country. Now, perhaps, it is time for a change in our perspective. Due to our sheer hostility with the Nazis, we are on re relatively good terms with capitalist countries like the U.S., and may be immensely beneficial for our industry to allow some limited level of foreign investment from such countries. They, of course, have to be kept under a close eye, but this is a small price to pay for the economic benefits of foreign investment. Which will it'll bring in? If you'd like to be a decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. A toast for economists. Great. And the father of the bureau. If one did not know the great men of Russian aerospace engineering, one could be forgiven. After all, very little that engineering had been conducted in previous years, but those years were over. As one of the top men, Pavel Sukhoi would be would make his mark. Sukhoi had despaired for years at the state of Russia, but with his proper return of socialist government, he was eager to advance his ideas and help build what he considered an ideal state, which to him meant skies filled with jet-powered aircraft. All too often, however, he had explained his ideas to lesser men. These, the younger engineers, newly educated but with a history of loyalty to the nation from a young age, had been working on a design for a long-range jet-powered bomber. Russia naturally needed strategic capability if it was to reclaim its natural role as a great power, and this Sukhoi was content with. He was not content with the design, though. The, the stabilizer of the young engineer design was wholly unacceptable. The configuration of the control surface is far too inadequate to provide a pilot with anything other than basic capability. A combat aircraft required more than that, much more, and he would be he would communicate that fact, regardless of how insisted or insistent he needed to be. Sukhoi knew de down that the engineer was not acting out of malice, but with simple inexperience. Apart from himself and vanishing a few others, the Russians had not designed novel aircraft in many years, and so, after this design was corrected, he resolved to work to instruct this engineer and others on proper design. Russia would again have a grand air fleet, and if he had anything to say about it, it would be composed of the best designed aircraft possible. The Bureau begins. Very cool. Uh, keep doing that for now. Uh, for now. You guys keep doing that. There you go. Cool. And I guess at this point, we'll just just a few. There you go, balancing out, quite literally. And prioritize the developmental industry. If we're to turn the Soviet motherland into an industrial powerhouse, we must focus on a developmental approach, implementing the most technologically advanced and modern techniques and methods to build a strong and efficient economic system. It's not enough to just build uh, huge industrial centers in the city in our cities. We must think about ways to raise economic level of the entire country, increasing the number of workers, the diversity of industry, and its commensurate efficiency. This will ensure our long-term economic prosperity, which is good. Good, good, good. Spend, cut. Nice. Even with increase in, uh, or decrease in poverty level, we're still not looking very good for a deficit. Oh, there goes LBJ. Look it again. But our growth is looking pretty nice. Pretty darn nice. Look at that. And we have, oh, Iberian Wars are raging on. Very nice. Cool, and that's us core, 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 core. Are we still building things up appropriately? Happy 1969, everyone. Hope you're having a great, great year. And we're slowly having signs of a good industry. Slowly, super slowly. But prior to this developmental industry. There we go. 50, wow. And keep going with the test. It doesn't really matter since we'll get them all done now. Oh, I wish we could do that other higher important industrial stuff, but whatever. Uh, let's see, Imperial Linchpins, Unification Wars, Strategic Theorem could help us get this stuff done more quickly. More production costs, but more soft attack and reliability is pretty nice. Oh, stain on the uniform. Oh, boy. Lessons from the Unification Wars. The battle for the Western Front required great skill and adaptation from the Red Army. Our forces had to fight both in farmland and great cities, to ford raging rivers, and across enormous hills to march through open fields and to fight in dense forests. We must impart the lessons, tactics, and best practices in these areas to the entire army. So we want to learn these skills all over again. Hmm. Oh. There we go, something. I can finally hear something. Finally again. And we should have that one done soon. Ah, there we go. Learn from the Unification Wars, my friends. It's always good to learn. Prepare for war. Well, technically we could do that one. Uh, let's not do that one. Exert influence. Well, it's already done. Prepare for war so we get all these other modifiers coming down here. Pass reform. And Grand Showdown. Cool. And this is what I wanted. Just because we get more infrastructure, free infrastructure, more political power, more manpower, air experience, I mean, and recom company, preparedness. Now, we do get more military factors, which is good, but... Or somewhere here. Um, but... Which... Oh, maybe we don't get more military factors for this one. That's okay, though. Whatever. That's fine. After this one, the Grand Marshal's Doctrine. Might as well keep going, right? The Grand Marshal Zukov has had enough of the instability and lack of chain of command that has plagued the front. It's time that the rules are laid down. There's one leader, and he's the man with the title of Grand Marshal, understand? And everyone else does what he says. It's pretty sensible, and everyone should do that. Yes, they should. 
Ah, uh, I do for Kutina, that's fine. Nice. The Grand Marshal's Doctrine. Rolling on would be nice. Marching on. Yeah, that's not bad. And what do we have here? Economic shock is gone. Finally. Good, good, good. Oh, we can't do that one. Oh, industrial linchpins. There are certain areas in our lands that have high concentrations of population and natural resources. It's our only natural that we should take advantage of these locations to build our industrial facilities. Would you like once we build Magnetor, Magnetor of course, to be our Gary, Indiana, we'll build up these towns to be our Detroit's, our Manchester's, and our Pittsburgh's. Kind of smoky, huh? Send Yakovlev. Oh, infantry rifles. Nice, nice. We got two done in one day. I'll grab some of that. And then, how's the land auction? Let's grab some of this. More breakthrough. Thank you. Oh, look at that. We have actually more free military factories. Improve. Good, 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 good. Get more tanks. Way more tanks. And then, uh... Focus on more casts. I want a lot of casts. I want lots of casts. And we'll do this one eventually. Efficient supply lines. We'll do this one next just because I want more infrastructure. Lack of supplies doomed our army back in World War II. It also doomed our forces in the West Russian War. It will not doom us again, for we will have an intricate group of supply depots and routes to ensure our forces, wherever they are, can get the ammo and food they need to keep doing what they do best. Western investments would not be bad. I kind of go down here, but this doesn't seem like there's a lot of real, really, really good benefits. Even though $400 million a year is really good, don't get me wrong, but we're talking about billions of dollars here, so... Do we actually have another tank division? Marines? Oh, we do. Look at that. Nice. Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to get some anti-air. We have enough military factories to do that for now. And keep coring and sugart. Oh, this is this one too. Yes, land forts, land forts. That's fine. Doesn't really matter to me. Cool. Oh, they're going to war with each other. Cool. Quality over quantity. Marching on. Stuff's okay. See on the uniform we need to do. Here's a socialism would be good. Oh, yeah. We want to get this one done too. That's going to take, just take time. That's all it is. More recruitable population factor and division recovery rate. Nice. We'll probably do the Grand Marshal's Doctrine just so we get the blueprints done as fast as possible. So whenever we can, we'll get the stuff, the land auction done as quickly as possible. Nice. Is this still going on? Six days left. Let's come over here. That's been shut off. We got the extra political power because of the preparing for the war. That still looks really, really bad, but whatever. Hey, look, four. Look at that. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And Russian reunification. Just close that for now. I kind of want to do this one. We get more stability and free repair. Efficient supply lines. Pretty good. Pretty good. Grand Marshal's Doctrine. Thank you very much. As much as I want to do this one, I kind of want to see what happens with this one first. And how much political power do we get? 0. 0.62. That's really bad. But whatever. Quality over quantity. We're going after the best army in the world. It'll have the best equipment, the best arms, the best vehicles. It's also going to be highly discriminatory about who is going to be a soldier in the Red Army. Having a large military is good, but there are many people who in Russia who simply who are not capable of making the cut. We want the best army. Then that is a mean of the largest one. So we hit even harder, which is nice. Abolish the forced labor system. Cool. And then we'll do the poverty one, and then we'll get hire even more foreign uh, professionals and stuff like that. Oh, there goes Yemen. Goodbye, Yemen. Actually, across the Urals, I'd love to do that one. But I want to... Ooh. We need to do this one so we can just go to war with Kazakhstan. Thank you. Quality over quantity. And then we will read a stain on the uniform. Tukhachevsky and his clique have been constantly going behind Marshal Zukov's back and occasionally trying to stab him in it. This is unbecoming of a professional soldier in the Red Army, especially ones with such high ranks as him and his men hold. They are a disgrace and a stain upon the uniform, and one knows what must be done with stains. These traitors will be removed from service. Nice. Get all them blueprints that we need. Look at that. One, two, three, four, some. Not bad. In which we will keep improving, improving, and building, building more cities for now. We only have 171 factories, which is not nearly enough, but... Oh, we need more tanks. Yeah, we definitely need more tanks. Holy cow. But I want a lot of casts. Casts? Can we duplicate? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Come on over here. Do we have any extra planes? I'm not sure why you're at 50, but we'll do that. And you guys are cast. Fighters? Any extra fighters? Yes. Can we duplicate them again? There you go. And fighters. Quality over quantity. Cool. And a stain on the uniform. Very nice. Oh, and we're still not coring everything, which is crazy. Cross your girls go and do that one. Wait, did we core everything? Maybe, maybe we did. Maybe we did. Okay, that's good. Actually, that's really good that we actually got that all done. Oof. Yeah, that's good. 
and then rolling on. We need better armor to fight the various warlords of the east and to complete with the, compete with the Germans in the west. All our efforts must go into researching new designs. If we can't build them ourselves, we'll go out and buy them instead. If you'd like to be about an improved academic base, please go right ahead. Something, something to be celebrated. More cap, speed, and output. Love it. Keep eyes straight ahead, huh? Yeah, I guess no sock entered in this campaign. That's okay. That is totally okay. Uh, ooh, that's quite a while, man. I want more budget. 14 billion as a deficit. Ah, so bad. Empower workers' organizations. Ah, was this one. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. But a stain on the uniform. Oh, boy. The contents of the letter from Zukov did not come as a surprise to Tukhachevsky. The only surprise was how long it had taken to receive him. After his failed effort to take control of the front following Boroshilov's death, he half expected to be executed for treason. Instead, Zukov had seen the bigger picture and let bygones be bygones for the moment anyway. Even his greatest rival could not deny Tukhachevsky's talents as a commander, and so he had been allowed to help retake Western Russia now that the front was secure, it seemed his services were no longer needed. The letter accused him of unprofessional and reckless behavior in the field that was not suitable for an officer of the Red Army. Tukhachevsky knew that that was horse crap, and so did Zukov. He commanded his men the same way he always had, efficiently and mercilessly. He knew that the Union's enemies would offer no quarter in war. They hadn't the last time they invaded, and Tukhachevsky refused to weaken his forces just for the sake of appearances. Apparently, appearances were important to Zukov, though. Important enough to fire one of his best generals, it would not just be him either. Tukhachevsky expected many of his subordinates would receive similar letters soon. If they haven't already, back in the old days, purges had been carried out with bullets, and Zukov's Union has seen that they're now done with notarized letters. <clears throat> He folded the letter and put it away. The end had finally come from, but not in the way he had expected. Maybe Zukov knew that he had expected death and decided to torment him instead. Rather than grant him a quick, clean ending, Tukhachevsky would be allowed to linger on, forced to find an answer to the question he hoped he would never have to ask. What next? And we didn't remove any generals that we currently have, which is a good thing. Alright, poverty relief. Yes, please. Uh, which is going to take forever to get to, because we only get 0.62 political power every day, which sucks. Oh, but we're getting closer. <clears throat> Order fail, which I don't remember the last time we actually... Put it in order, but whatever. All right. There we go. <clears throat> Rolling on with marching on. We have done it. After many years in hard-fought battles, we have secured the West Rough Russia and the entire front against Germany. But Moscow isn't our next target, at least not yet. We will march east now to restore the former Union. Then the Red Army will double back to face the Germans once more. Nice. More research. Very good. And we're going to grab this, probably. Even better motorized. Good. And we're almost done with the land doctrine, finally. Oh boy. Can't believe the AI did not do it at all. But a job done properly. Everything. And the Red Army must be done quickly and with the least amount of effort. There are a million things to do and we must do all of them fast with the resources that we currently have. We expect all of our men to uphold this ideal. Hopefully. That would be a good thing to do if they could uphold it. <laughs> Army professionalism continues to go up, which is good, 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 good. And... One, two, three, four. We're almost approaching five. Fourteen billion is not bueno, but whatever. And research is coming on quite swimmingly. Yeah. Right, keep training if you need to. You guys looking pretty good. We did get Marines, I thought, right? Oh, yeah, we got all these guys too. Just couldn't get all this stuff. I don't want to see this. I, I I can't be bothered with this stuff, so. My apologies for the clicking. It is oh. But it is. And a job done properly. Crass is Nanjing. Very good. Oh, we have Everyone's templates here, which really sucks. Oh my goodness, why does the AI make so many different templates? Why? Why are you paying us? But heroes of socialism. Many great deeds for the people of Russia have been done by the people of the Red Army. We must remember these heroes and what they have done. Their battles against the oppressors of Russia will, must always be remembered. And their stories shall motivate and inspire the army and its people. Nice. Now let's go ahead and come over here. Light infantry is okay. Anything we need for this? How many tanks do we have? Not enough. I want to throw some of this on there, but I guess we'll wait. Because if we're already come with already, we got plenty of guns and artillery for now. So marines, you know what? I don't use a lot of marines, so I'll keep training some more. Why not? And these guys are thirty combo with, which is obviously not ideal, but whatever. We're gonna use marines to fight in the mountains. Don't ask me why. It's just because we can. Nice. Oh, what do we have? Anything here? Not too much. No land reform. Uh, I like that for better coring times, but march of the red army. Zukov. 
stood above the marching soldiers, watching them drill relentlessly as they had been doing so for the past hour. If they didn't have enough weapons or resources for war, every soldier would have to be well-trained in elite fighting methods to overcome the enemy. One well-trained veteran was better than the ten regulars in Zukov's mind. Your marching break is over. Back to push-ups, yelled the drill instructor, walking between each individual, intently making sure every man was put into the effort, or putting in their effort. Come on, you can do 30, Dominic, or do you want to do laps again? There, was a, there were weak links, of course, thought Zukov. They were in every army, some had more than others. However, the stronger each man would help was was would help them in the field. Weakness could very well mean, de mean death. Instructor, I want to see these men marching again. Make it double time. You heard the Grand Marshal march. I better not see any slow steps. Entire men began to march in place, again, making sure who, who, to impress the Grand Marshal. They didn't want to see what would happen if they made a mistake. Bringing in the Red Army was sure hard work. Get those feet higher? Cool. Yeah, I want, it, I want it more better coring times. But then again, but the next war we go to, it won't really matter too much. Kazakhstan, yes, we're going to fight them, but whatever. And people, the army of the people. The Red Army is not a militarized army, the VKPB, as some will say. For when the system failed, who saved the people of northwestern Russia from chaos and disaster? Who gave the Hitlerites a tremendous slashing during the West Russian War? And who delivered the people of West Russia from bandits and warlords? The Red Army fights for the people of Russia, and will continue to do so until the Red Flag flies from Klapeda to Cape Zednev. Zeznet. More army professionalism. As much as I want to do this one. Actually, I probably should have done that one instead, but army land reform. Uh, I would have loved to do that one, but whatever. It's fine. And now we're going to need a lot of anti-air. Actually, not that much. That's actually a lot less than I thought we would need. Huh. Go do that and then come back down here. Cool. There you go. Uh, go down to two. Supply chain reinforcement. And we're almost done with our lie doctrine. The hero of the Soviet Union. Cool. Yuli waited for his turn on the stage, knowing he had finally achieved his career's dream. Hero of the Soviet Union. Savior of Communism. One of the bravest in the Red Army, years of fighting Germans, collaborators, and capitalists had finally paid off. As he continued away, he watched a group of Red Army generals congratulating the man in front of Yuli for facing down a Finnish tank and destroying with only a grenade he had left. The man smiled and stepped off stage, returning to his compatriots. Yuli Volkov, please come to the stage, said a voice from one of his generals. Yuli approached the platform, proudly walking up the stairs and greeting all the way. Volkov, your heroic action in Onega are those of legend. Your stories, like many others, yet incredible nonetheless. You fought bravely, leading your men into the anti-communist volunteer guard fortifications and recruiting a breakthrough into Onega. Your rescue during the ambush on the Onega Bridge will be a story told far into the future. As a private, you bravely defended your motherland in the West Russian War and fought for the good of Russia and the assault of Moscow. If anyone deserves hero of the, hero of the Soviet Union, it is you. Pride overcame Yuli as a medal was pinned on his chest. He knew he would continue to serve in the Red Army as the Union continued to reunify Russia. Maybe he would even create a medal just for him. A great, great story, and we shall do eyes to the West. The U.S. of A. has been a loyal patron of the Red Army since the Great Patriotic War. No one to, not one to waste chances to spite the Reich's fascists, its material support, food, equipment, and medicines plenty. Continue past Akagi Accords and into the West Russian War. Formally hailing Washington with their diplomats will signal to them that the Red Army is ready and willing to continue the relation cut short by Sil Silverov. I don't know why we get that event. That makes no sense for us to get it, right? I mean, we're not Italy. I mean, yeah, it's a worldwide thing that you'd learn about eventually, but... Like, the unification of the British Isles, why do we get that? We're not, we're not British. We don't get... I mean, yeah, I guess technically we do get the Yasuda Crisis, too. Or the Nanjing Crisis, maybe. Or at least the, the Nanjing one, but... I don't know. Seems kind of odd. At least to me. As always seems very odd to me. And we are we almost have to get more population at a better recovery rate, even though we don't really need more population. Cool. Send Yakovlev. For the first envoys, Russia will send to the Western Hemisphere in decades, garnering impressive first impressions as a necessity impelled by the front's needs. In our entourage, will be aided immensely by Alexander Yakovlev and, to a lesser extent, Sergei Akromeyev, both fervent advocates of welcoming America back to Arkhangos even in the days of Foroshilov. If nothing else, comrade... Oh, <clears throat> Yakovlev's rhetoric converges surprisingly well with the Americans. His words will surely resonate among their politicians and media men. 11.1%, not bad, my friends, not bad. So if you'd like to read about Straight Eyes Ahead, Sen Rezakov, Against a German Giant, A Nod to the Empire, Approach to Socialist Governments, Memories of Fire, International Social Solidarity, as well as the Reichov Conference, please go ahead. But we must continue with this guy, right? We must send him. Send him on over soon enough. Is that another uh, tank, maybe? Actually, we're spending the most on civilian construction, huh? Yes, it is. Very good. That is fine with us. Eyes to the west, my friends. Very good. 
Um, is anything here to really care about? Not too much. And we shall read about Medium Washington. Diplomatic etiquette, metal back to uniforms and rudimentary English, whatever we could appear, comrade Yakolov's entourage with, they already have. Their ship will depart Akongolsk for New York City and thence to Washington, D.C. within the coming weeks. Yakovlev was keen to assure the Grand Marshal that he will return with dignified gifts from the Coca-Cola Company. Yes, comrade Zukov. And the fishing tackles, Mr. Eisenhower promised, too. Nice. We have some of the best trucks. Oh, happy 1970, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. It's time for research speed, shall we? 80 days is not bad, my friends. Basic motorized, thank you very much. And after that, we're going to go with some civilian construction. Anything else here? Probably not. I don't think so, right? Nope. Oh, we still have basic Oh, my goodness. Basic artillery is so bad. Um, infrastructure. Build, 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 and get more equipment, too. That's totally fine with us. Meet in Washington, my friends. Arriving in D.C., the plane began a slow descent to the Dulles Air International Airport, circling once before completing its landing. Alexander Yakovlev was glad to be finally off the long flight. His trip to America was a rather bumpy one, and he didn't usually like flying. Sent to America to negotiate a trade deal and request American economic aid, Yakovlev was happy to meet with Americans. Having visited multiple times before, he was all but used to the country and its people. This time, it would be an official visit. If all went as planned, he would even get to meet the president. It was only lucky that Yakovlev knew English. He was the only one of the few other higher echelon members of the front that knew it, actually. No one actually really studied it back in the World War days, and most couldn't even travel to English-speaking countries. But that was the past, and if Yakovlev was successful in these few weeks, he knew a partnership that could last decades be built between Russia and the United States. Hopefully, the Americans greet us with open arms. We'll see. Establish a consulate? Why not? Might as well. By and large, Yakovlev's visit was success. President Nixon and his associates heartily welcomed the Red Army's officers to speak before the Congress for the first time. The speech Yakovlev gave to America's assembled, assembled statesmen, his companions said, dominated the country's newspapers and TV for days. It was in this revelous fugue where the president was invited, has invited our ambassador to the old Soviet consulate, which he offered to us in per perpetuity. Let us not look at gift horses in the mouth, or in this case, gift buildings in their facade. Um, next year, it hasn't been president for, like, what, six years? So, I'm not sure what they're talking about, but meet Washington, a historic handshake. It, this was it, the moment Yakovlev had been waiting for. He had finally gotten to meet the president of the U.S., and they had talked about so much more than just trade agreements. There was a lot more to know about the America than Yakovlev realized, and of course, he mentioned how things were back home. They were much better since the last time Yakovlev visited America, that was for sure. While his charms may have been useful for in, in negotiations, now he would need some difficult, different, or different charms. The big moment was upon them. The two would appear before the press and show the world the partnership between Russia and America, and we're done with the law induction. Sipping outside the White House doors and speaking fluent English, Yakovlev turned and said, President LBJ, it's been an honor to meet you. I'm very happy about the partnership between our two nations. Open trade will surely benefit us both. <clears throat> I feel the same, Mr. Yakovlev, said the President. I do hope this partnership continues, and I promise I'll try everything I can to persuade Congress the benefits of our alliance. I'm glad you chose to be with us to move onwards into the future. Yakovlev held out his hand, smiling at the President and the cameras. The President shook it as they were blinded by the camera lights from the countless reporters and journalists. Smile for the camera. Nice. The new Soviet state. Look at that. Ah, yes, good. But no, nothing really there appealing to us. And appeal for recognition. When the Union fell to Barbarossa, her soldiers were grouped in orderly fashion. When Russia fell to the warlordism, her generals kept order for as long as they were able to. And when the Reich was crippled by the fruits of their arrogance, the be her beloved Red Army struck a blow from which Germania never recovered. We are the motherland's mighty bulwark. One and all, awesome uh, inheritors to a thousand-year watch against her old nemesis to the West. For her sake, the Americans and their plenty must be reminded of that fact. I'm going to lose a little bit more money, but that's okay. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at this. Actually, one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, oh, so nice. That's so much better, but it's not getting that much better, but we'll get there in time. In time. Appeal for recognition, my friends. We must. And Western Investments, because we could be tapping the market. Uh, let's tap the market first. West Russia has resources of plenty, chromium and tungsten from Vyadka, steel from Vologda and Tartarstan and more. The, uh, that other country's hunger for raw materials such as ours is not a question among Stavka. Only the extent to which they shall have their fill from us. The Grand Marshal has been swayed towards giving the wider world trickles of West Russia's bounty and thus open another source of dearly needed revenue rather than forbidding them outright. We get more uh, trade levels or we get more opinion, more construction speed and output, less resources to market, but that's okay for now. That is a cost we must bear, which is totally okay. Get more factory output, please. Thank you. Ah, that's looking pretty good for us. We saw fascist influence here. Kolchak. Romanov, despotists. Authoritarian Demo Democrats, Yevgorov. A social democracy, Kuropatkin. As well as Surkov, who's leading libertarian socialist thought here. Oh, boy. Not bad. Oh, look at that. Good, 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 good. 
Oh, I want to do land reform, but whatever. Construction speed actually would not be bad. Uh, get a bonus for industry. I don't care what the other ones say. We need industry bonuses. More industry, please. More industry. Tapping the market would be nice. Get even more construction speed. Thank you very much. Oh, I got that one too. Good. I guess we'll do the military one next too, because we can. Tapping the market. America recognizes us. Look at that. It appears America has recognized the government. A major victory for us diplomatically. This means relations between us and the Americans will grow even stronger and open up even more options for us in the future. Trade between our two nations can also increase, which should hopefully help us economically. It appears sending Yakov Lev has definitely increased our chances. Our friends in America will surely help us achieve victory. Great. Great. But Western investments, finally. The region's new pieces will allow the front latitude in developing its war-torn lands to their old potential. As farmers reap, uh, follow fields anew and workers return to dilapidated assembly lines, so too does money return to the countrysides and cities, both first in trickles and then in gently flowing streams. Our new friends in the American economy may be interested in helping Stavka turn these trickles into streams and perhaps them into torrents. Oh, uh, we get better research facilities? Not bad. We can still improve, use that. Still use and abuse and take that. That would be very, very nice. We pass a reform, which is not over, which is good. And we get a double bonus for electronics, even though... I guess at this point, we don't really need a bonus for an electronics at all, since we've already done what we need. Black market is available. Well, that's nice. I don't really care about the black market anymore. But it is what it is. Cool. And we got some more of this, too. Uh, anything else here that we really need to care about? No. No, not really. Okay, lower black market trading, but whatever. We get rid of that when we have the PP. Agriculture. I kind of want to do construction, but... Copulator the government. It, it doesn't cost us that much to do that one. We get more expertise, which is not super important right now, but... Let's just say we're getting closer and closer to in an innovative industry and then appeal f or apply for OFNA. Through our actions, the West Russian Revolutionary Front has regained its old standing with the U.S. Western ships dock at Arkhangelsk and leave with Russian wars, just as they had before the Great Patriotic War. American generals appraise our troops with approving eyes. By the day, their diplomats regard our ambassadors less as the Red Armies, but that as the Soviet Union's come again. Comrade Yakovlev's presence, a prescience, prescience, has borne the fruit front has borne the front fruit. Now more than ever, we can revive the mighty convoys that have delivered hope to our men with every single visit. Nice. So this is all good. Uh, actually, as much as I want to do that, get better artillery. The AI, I swear, man. The AI does not know what to do. Uh, build, build, build. And eventually, when you're done, build some more, too. Because we're going to re reunify, and then we're going to immediately attack Kazakhstan if we can. Hopefully no one's going to really care, since the Far East is still trying to kill each other. Just kill, it kills itself off. Not bad. Oh, look at that. Someone got encircled. That's not good. Oh, but then we're going to lose this. Oh, that sucks. Western Investments and apply for OFNA. Great. Oh, there. Well, now it's time for an oil crisis, my friends. Quality over quantity. Black gold, red sand, not bad. Black. I don't remember ordering that stuff, but okay. 30.7 billion, not great, but not bad. All the expenditures, 80 million, that's not too bad. Oh boy, 41 billion. Oh, and we can do one more of these before we do anything else. Because we can do that whenever we want. We'll do that one eventually. New Soviet state doesn't really matter because we don't get any more benefits. There's no other reforms we can do. So... Um, oh, what do we want to do here? Equipment... Agriculture, probably equipment. Yeah, import heavy machinery, that's nice. Hopefully that'll continue on as we move on to the next stage. The wealth of Vornberg, very good, my friends. Keep going, 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 going. Even though we could have spent more just to increase construction speed too. That's all right. Four more days and then we'll reunify half of Russia. Well, the Russia that we can play as. Ah, beautiful, my friends. And we are done with this part of the focus tree. A nighttime communique. Wonton soup, the voice was so cold it could have uh, uh, flash frozen the Volog, the Volga. You asked the ambassador to her, of her benefactor, the U.S. of America, to be taken to eat. Wonton soup. Wonton soup. Sounds to zoom. I, uh, I can explain. Yakov left, took a deep breath. We had to find a place where it would be conductive to raise the sensitive topics you have mentioned. Foreign aid and soldiers in a pricey establishment? No, that would be passe. Yes, his defense was going well, he pressed on. So I asked for something so extraordinary his location would bypass the ears of any potential surveillance. And who would have think of eating wonton soup in an American city? A perfect plan, da? The sibilant background swallowed his words. We will mention this in a later stage. Alexander, for now, what news of our requests? 
The Russian link close with unthinkable nature of old routines. I think we've got in the bag. The Americans seem receptive and we'll speak later in the week regarding possible air routes or supply chains. I assume we'll clear the hurdles regarding the defense networks? Air defense networks? Yes, Yakovlev, we will clear the air routes. Assure our new partners that we will cause no trouble for them. Another interlude. Oh, and Yakovlev? Good job, but no more once on soup requests. Please. Nice. My friends. But look at that stability. That naval XP. Even though when... Uh... Actually, we're still guarding the seas. That's kind of cool. Um, do we, we don't need to, we, yeah, we already trained everyone here under Yumashev when we played the Kamchatka, but that's really cool. And dissolve the front, front no more. After years of bitter struggle, we finally reunited our shattered motherland. The West Revolutionary Front, our sword and shield against the Nazi menace and decades of warlordism, can finally be dissolved. In its place, we shall restore the Russian Soviet Federative Soviet Republic. We're the true heirs of the Soviet Union, the carriers of the legacy of the October Revolution. The last light of truth, equality, and justice in a world drowned in darkness, led by Grand Marshal Zhukov, we will triumph. And let's finish that focus, and then... Um, off screen, I might just go ahead and do all of these. If you like to read about these, please go ahead. It's the exact same thing every single time, so there's nothing really special here. Of course, there's this, if there's a special event, I will bring it up to you guys and enter wonders. Pretty normal. A source of our materials, as well as chase the sun, so it is what it is. And let's go and just go to extra influence of Kazakhstan and just. Oh, we need to put power for that. God dang it. So that's why we're going to do that other one first. Import heavy machinery. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, man. Not bad. As the Far East tries to continue killing itself. We're okay with that. Uh, cut that down, maybe. What are we missing here? Oh, anti-air? Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not good. Do you have a lot of spare tanks now? This is all the front, my friends. Front no more, and then into the atomic age. As the Grand Marshal sat down at his desk, he pondered his thoughts. The front had succeeded in the goals of reuniting the West. <clears throat> However, much more work was to be done for the reconquering of the East, and soon this was after the strike against the Germans, before that much had to be done, however, and currently the one thing that was on Gregory Zukov's mind was to make this an official statement. All the Grand Marshal needed to do was garner approval from his cabin and then officially change the name from West Russian Revolutionary Front to the Russian Soviet Federative Socialist Republic. Once he had finally do this, the time would be realized the Front had officially become a country once again, instead of a simple rump state that had been teetering on the edge of death. However, the Front was well and alive, focusing on its next prey for the next time until the continuation of the Great Patriotic War. Until then, only time would tell what the Republic would do. Sukov smiled as he finished writing his plans for the meeting with the Presidium later. Hopefully they would accept his proposal. However, until then, they had much more work to do. Due to the Republic encompassing western half of Russia, they had to deal with many more problems. Whether it's grain stocks rising or the issue of funding for each military branch, Zhukov was confident that these issues would sort themselves out after a bit of nudging from the government or even himself. The military, while important, seemed like it could be quite the large issue for the Union, but I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will end this campaign and reunify all the parts of Russia that we currently can. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.